Today on Rescue Vet, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel goes in for brain surgery after his owner discovers a rare condition that may cost him his life. The seizures could be to the point where they could be uncontrollable to the point where he could maybe even die. A Jack Russell Terrier with a variety of health problems is taken to Bees Ferry for an ultrasound to determine what is causing her liver enzymes to be so high. Is it possible the diagnosis is pointing towards cancer? She's lost so much weight, she's gone from 20 pounds to 15.7. Yeah, and it worries me. Stacy Boston, a local veterinarian, has taken her five-month-old Cavalier King Charles Spaniel putter to veterinary specialty care for a craniotomy. After noticing a lump on putter's head, he was taken in for an MRI and diagnosed with a dermoid cyst, which is very rare for this breed of dogs. The MRI showed that the cyst had entered through the skull and into portions of putter's brain. This being actually in the brain, um, it's not a surgery that I, in my practice, would be able to take care of. Sometimes, as a general practitioner, you actually need the help of the specialist. Today, what we're going to do is uh, do surgery to remove the abnormality along the skin and follow it along the uh, stalk that will extend down through the skull. Today, just kind of is going to tell me basically the quality of life that he's going to have from here on out. Um, if we can go in and basically get the entire cyst, then that will give him basically a perfect life. If we can't go in and get the entire cyst, then he may be prone for seizures um, down the road. And the seizures could be to the point where they could be uncontrollable to the point where he could maybe even die. If all goes well with the surgery, Dr. Boston will be giving putter to her dad as a gift. After losing a family pet that was my dad's best friend, it was very hard for him to think about having another pet. They haven't had a pet in 15 years, so he's finally decided that it was time um, for him to have one of his own. She just didn't want to give them a puppy that had problems, so she just wanted to make sure everything was taken care of before they, before they took him over and, and got extremely attached to him. Um, I think, uh, you know, he was very thoughtful of her. Good morning. How are you doing? Very good. He looks good. He's all set for today? Yeah, he's doing well. All right, so I'll take him on back and get the uh, IV into him and okay. get everything set up, and then we'll be right back. Perfect. Come here, buddy. Before the surgery begins, veterinary technicians administer a sedative. Oh, buddy, I'm so sorry. He gave me the option to scrub in so that I could be a part of the surgery today, um, so that I could watch and basically go in and, and see what's going on and, and be involved. This is a nerve-wracking procedure uh, for a number of reasons. One, it's, it's brain surgery, and so there's always the risk of complications with that. Secondly, it's a young puppy, and then lastly, it's, um, you know, it's a colleague of mine. It's a, a local veterinarian as well, so there's uh, multiple, multiple reasons to be a little, a little more anxious about it. There's the risk of the outcome of not knowing the long term of his life as far as quiet of life, even if the procedure is successful. But there's also the risk of anesthesia. So um, hoping today goes well and, um, you know, just going to watch him closely and know that they'll take good care of him here today. A 15-year-old Jack Russell Terrier named Savannah, who has been a patient at Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital since she was born, is brought in for a follow-up. Over the last couple of weeks, Savannah has had an ear infection, a loss of appetite, and a decrease in activity levels. 
She also has high liver enzymes, which can be fatal if not treated quickly. She has vestibular syndrome, which is what's making her head tilt. She has a lot of back pain, so she does move very stiffly. Savannah also has cataracts, bladder control problems, allergies, arthritis, stomach aches, is hyperthyroid, and has a heart murmur. She probably has more things than most dogs, but when you get to that age, things do just kind of start to mount. A year ago, her liver enzymes were very, very high. I mean, like 10 times normal. And so this year, her blood work is showing us that those liver enzymes are about five times normal. So not as high as they were before, but they're still pretty high. Well, the doctor's thinking it could be because she's on so many different medications because of her multiple medical issues and her age and her supplements that um, she might have hepatitis, it could be a liver infection, or it could be cancer. Hello, how hey, are you doing? I'm good, Dr. Singer. How are you? Good. To get a better understanding of what is causing Savannah's liver enzymes to be so high, Dr. Sanger goes over the list of medications that Savannah is on in hopes that some of them can be eliminated. Well, this is for her kidneys, heart. And this is to help keep her from losing her urine. So that's keeping her thyroid. Mm -hmm. Well, she's lost so much weight, she's gone from 20 pounds to 15.7. Yeah. And it worries me. And so today, what we're part of what we're doing today is determine is there another reason for her weight loss? At Bees Ferry Veterinary Hospital, Dr. Sanger is about to perform an ultrasound on Savannah to see if she can find any signs of hepatitis, liver infection, or cancer. All right, so got the probe on here, and abnormal textures is what I'm really looking at. He's okay. It's hard to be on your back that long. I know, especially with her sore back, so I'm trying to go fast here. You're such a good girl. Yeah. Okay, you got this, baby girl. I'm almost done. I got almost all my pictures of your kidneys here. And I'm going to turn it on its side. Let's see if we can get her right kidney. Are we going to roll you this way? There we go. Mommy's right here. Sweet girl. I know you don't like it. I know. Her liver is an abnormal texture. Back at veterinary specialty care, Dr. Brofman and Dr. Boston are scrubbing in before performing the craniotomy on putter. There's a number of complications that can occur with surgery. Uh, worst case scenario would be that there is a lot of adhesions, that it's involving more than just the layer of tissue that surrounds the brain, but is actually invaded into the brain as well, which would make it much more difficult to, to remove. Uh, anesthetic reactions, bleeding, uh, there can be swelling within the brain that can potentially cause um, shifts within the normal brain tissue and can be potentially fatal as well, so that there's life-threatening complications that are, are possible here today. This is an unusual breed for this to happen. It's also in an unusual location. Usually it's along the spinal cord. Uh, usually it's in um, what's called Rhodesian Ridgebacks as a breed. Um, I'm only aware of one report of this in a, in a dog on the top of the head. And in that case, it did not extend down into the skull. And based on the MRI, it looks like this one may extend into the skull and, and around the brain. And I'm just trying to be careful to minimize the amount of tissue that we have to dissect here to make it easier to close. It's a new experience for Dr. Boston to see one of her own pets go into surgery, but she is confident that Dr. Brofman will give Putter a healthier life. I can feel the orbit right here. So, I mean, we're talking, you know, centimeter or two from the uh, eye socket and I mean I'm not I'm not as concerned that I'm going to go into the eye socket or, or orbit but more concerned that it's just going to be difficult to, to close the skin. 
Dr. Ludwig, who specializes in soft tissue surgery, is called in for her opinion on the cosmetic appearance of Putter's extensive skin removal. I'll, uh, I'll just continue to dissect this out, and then I'll, I'll let you know and just get that little tidbit from you, if, see if we can close it or if we need to have you scrub in and do a flap. When I did my, uh, my medicine residency um, in New York City, Dr. Ludwig was actually a surgeon there at the Animal Medical Center. Just by coincidence, I ended up here again this past July with her. I had, yeah, I had no idea she was here. I can feel this right here, just right of midline on the back of the skull is this kind of bump in the skull. And, and this is, actually I can feel what the normal structure is, and this is abnormal skull right here. Dr. Brofman has noticed an abnormal structure on Putter's skull. Fortunately, it's not an issue to be concerned with. There definitely was a, a, an area of abnormal bone on, on the top of his skull. Um, it doesn't seem like it will cause any type of problems. Um, there again, it's probably just a birth defect. Um, and just one of those things. But it shouldn't have any long-term effects. So from what I'm seeing so far, I don't find an extension. I'm, I'm not completely done by second, but I don't find an extension of this into the skull. Sometimes the MRI can be misleading, and that's been reported in the past, and people have gone in expecting to do spinal surgery to remove this and, and find out once they get down there that it doesn't extend into the spine, and so sometimes it actually isn't brain surgery. So it looks like this lesion is just going to be superficial. Um, it's just going to be basically a skin cyst. So the fact that it's not going to go into the brain tissue is, is, is very exciting. Um, it's something that I've been waiting months to find out. This means putter going to have a nice little scar on the top of his head, but hopefully there should be no um, after effects at all, and he should just live a normal life. It's always a relief to know that you don't have to do a brain surgery if it's not necessary. There's always, you know, the excitement, and it keeps the day interesting to be able to do it, but if, if it's not necessary, I certainly don't want to do it, and I try to avoid it if I can. Given that the fact that this skin mass has just been growing and growing and growing. Um, probably would have eventually needed to be removed anyway. And probably easier to do it now when it was still smaller. The big complication we see with it when it's just in the skin is just recurrent abscesses and infections. Which he's already had yeah. twice. And then actually what we may do is, is repeat an MRI and just see what it was that we were seeing before. And, see if it was just what we call an artifact, which is something that appears on the image to be one thing, when in actuality there's other factors that may be influencing the image to cause a false image. And just double check one more time around here and make sure. Feels pretty good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and wake him up now and uh, just keep them comfortable and you'll take them home today, I guess? And no, whatever you yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, if we're not, since we didn't do the brain yeah. uh, part, I'm comfortable sending them home and, and you can give like injectable pain medication sure. at home if you want or whatever yeah. you prefer. Potter will spend a few hours at veterinary specialty care as he recovers from surgery. In a couple of weeks, Dr. Brothman will do a second MRI to double check that there are no underlying issues consisting within his brain. We didn't know how today would turn out, so it was very a, a pleasant surprise and that we didn't actually have to go in and find anything in his brain. So his quality of life should be totally normal. He's going to be a happy and healthy puppy. There's definitely a bond there that I've had with him for the last several months, but to know that I can give this gift to my dad means more to me. After seeing abnormal textures in Savannah's liver on the ultrasound, Dr. Sanger is now concerned that cancer may be present. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this very, very narrow gauge needle here, and I'm gonna stick it down into her liver using the ultrasound to guide me into the spots I wanna look at. And I'm gonna get some cells into that needle, and then we'll blow those onto a slide, and we'll send those slides to a pathologist and have them tell us about the abnormal cells that are there. Are there abnormal cells there? You can 
little prick you won't be all done. That's a nice sample, right where we want to be. Got it? Here we go. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you take her home. I'll put all this together, make a plan for you, okay. and we'll go over it tomorrow. Okay. Hey, good to see you. As long as we control her pain, that's the most important thing. And I don't want her to get nauseous and feel sick. Those are the bad things. Nausea and pain. So that's why we stay on top of these things with Savannah, because we don't want her to, to feel bad. I'm thinking it's the old age and medications that we have to keep her in pain medication and we'll just do whatever we need to do. Savannah's our little girl, so we'll get whatever treatment she needs, mortgage a house again or whatever. This is a dog that literally grew up with this hospital. And this hospital is only 18 years old. And I mean, that's a special thing when you can take a dog all the way from puppyhood through their very old age. And usually we take them through death as well. I'm gonna cry. I mean, so we've known these clients for a very, very long time. And they just become part of the family. Before deciding how to treat Savannah, Dr. Sanger will have to wait until pathology results come back with the diagnosis. It's still uncertain if Savannah has hepatitis, a liver infection, or cancer. Two weeks have passed since Savannah had an ultrasound and blood work done. Thankfully, no cancer was present in the pathology reports. But it did suggest that the medications were causing the high liver enzymes. However, it is uncertain which drugs are causing the problem. We were afraid she was going to die, we were going to lose her or something. We weren't ready for that because she's been our baby for almost 16 years. And we're just trying to get her off as much medication as possible so her liver can heal. I'm just real thankful. I stopped five of the medications that she was taking. Some of them were for allergies, uh, one of them was for her arthritis, um, and we just tried to get all of her doses down to as low as possible. So today, two weeks later, we're going to check her liver enzymes and see if they are decreasing now that we've made those changes. Hi, honey. How's my girl? Come say hello. She's gained a pound. Yes, in two weeks. I'm so glad. I know. We've been praying hard for her. Hey, Savannah, have a cookie. All right. Well, let's take you up on the table, and we're going to take a look at you, and then we'll put everything all together. Savannah gained a pound since I last saw her, and that's in two weeks. And that's really good. Her liver function had just decreased to the point where she couldn't even keep weight on. What about any evidence of more pain since we reduced some of her medicine? I think she's doing pretty good. Okay. All right, let's listen. Oh, right on cue, huh? Got a hairball? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she just looks shinier to me. She looks bright-eyed, and, and she still has that head tilt, um, but she's just moving around better. She just feels better. Blood work is done to conclude if Savannah's liver enzymes are better or worse after dropping five of the 16 medications that she's currently on. It will be two days until those results come back from the lab. We will continue to monitor her liver enzymes on these lower dose of drugs. And if we can get her liver enzymes down into the normal range, she stays off most of these medications. I'll be able to spread out the times you know, how far it is in between before I have to check blood again. But right now, I'm gonna to continue to monitor her, like, monthly, until we get her where we want her to be. Well, we're excited that she's getting better. We're very pleased with Dr. Sanger and all the staff here at Bees Ferry. We're just hoping that she'll continue to improve in health and live long and prosper. It's been two weeks since Putter's surgery. His incision has healed and he's back to his old bouncy self. Today, Dr. Brofman will repeat the MRI to see if there is anything else to be concerned with. 
I'm going to stay today to go in um, with Dr. Brofman to, to watch the MRI and to see if there's still something there um, or if it's truly an artifact in the brain. And hopefully that's the case, which means Putter will be a perfectly normal pup. So how's Putter doing? He's doing great. Um, he didn't have any problems after surgery. Um, incision healed well. Good. Um, I don't think he... Uh, the biggest part was keeping him quiet. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, just a little little lump there. Um, you know, although we didn't find anything that looked like it extended yeah. to the brain, although it looked like on the MRI that there could be something there. We just want to make sure there's not something else we need to address. For sure. So here's where it was outside of the skin right here. I'm not seeing anything real obvious that, uh, you know, it doesn't look like we're seeing what we saw last time. So certainly I'll send it to the radiologist to see what she thinks, though. It's good. So far, the images look perfectly normal. Um, and what we saw a couple months ago is, is not there. So I think that with those findings, he's pretty much um, in the clear. And uh, I don't think that we'll see any problems in the future. We're not going to have to do anything where we risk damage to the brain and so um, it's very a very good thing for putter we're gonna send off these images today to the radiologist just to confirm that everything is, is fine and then he should be going to his new home next weekend to my parents I'm happy for him um, to know that he will lead a perfectly normal life it's not every day that I get to come over here and be involved in this so to be here um, and to work with him and his staff they're phenomenal and I get to now go back to my clinic and pass that on. So when I send people over here, I have the utmost confidence that their animals, and as well as them, they're going to get taken care of.